WPA was ratified by Wi-Fi Alliance in 2003. As we mentioned, this was an interim solution. The name is a bit misleading. WPA2 suggests that it's the improved, more secure version of WPA protocol. It's the basic version of WPA instead, one that did not catch on. Users and manufacturers had to be encouraged somehow to move on to the new standard. WPA was replaced with WPA2, and it was decided that the interim version will be called WPA. Because it's essential to ensure maximum retroactive compatibility, we need to use similar security solutions. That's why we still use the RC4 algorithm. To enhance security, we extend the IV from 24 to 48 bits. This is a significant change. We also eliminate the problem related to the lack of dynamic key change. We introduce the TKIP protocol that allows the automatic generation of keys. WPA verifies the identity of users, authenticates them not only against the pre-shared key, but also using the already mentioned RADIUS server. The last problem that was noticed and fixed related to data integrity. Instead of a CRC checksum, the protocol used a cryptographic hash function. This function makes it more difficult to modify packets without affecting checksums. The first version of WPA is vulnerable to attacks. Most common WPA attacks target pre-shared keys. Since cracking them by going through all combinations through brute force attack, exhaustive key search, wouldn't be cost effective, dictionary files are used for this purpose. If for some reason you need to use the WPA in the personal mode, in the pre-shared key mode, this key has to be long and complicated. Don't shrink from providing 63 random characters as a key. The key should not be found on any dictionary or word list. It should not be a simple permutation either. Adding one at the end doesn't do anything to improve the security of a key. Let's now briefly discuss WPA2. This protocol uses RADIUS servers. As far as wireless networks are concerned, this is a real revolution. The RC4 algorithm, which is vulnerable to incorrect implementation, is replaced with the advanced encryption standard. Additionally, each frame is encrypted 10 times using AES. This solution is known as CCMP. A brute force attack on the frame, a WPA2 protected packet, would take over 2 to the 100th power operations to succeed. This is practically impossible. The protocol makes use of a long, random, and unpredictable 48-bit initialization vector. Key management is automatic and native. You don't need a TKIP for this. How can you break into a WPA2 network? It takes the same methods that need to be used for a WPA network. There are essentially two classes of attacks. The first class utilizes, for example, the processing capacity of graphics cards that scale very well. You can run multiple operations at a time if a computer has more than one well-equipped graphics card with CUDA. The processing is complex, so it might take a bit. You can also try to guess the key. This works to limit the territory of an attack to a PSK-protected network. This will prove effective if the key is easy to determine. Now a brief comparison of the three technologies. WEP, WPA, and WPA2, or the 802.11x standard. WEP, like WPA, encrypts packets using RC4. 
Unlike WEP, WPA dynamically changes keys and has a stronger IV. WPA2 uses the CCMP version of Advanced Encryption Standard for encryption. The same protocol is also used for automatic key exchange. As you'll see, the solution is a great way of ensuring VLAN security. The security of VLANs, much as the security of computer systems, is optional. It's our task to choose appropriate technologies. For standard networks, there's of course many more technologies to choose from. Each technology protects a given layer and they're less conspicuous. For wireless networks, the situation is much more simple. A wireless network administrator responsible for security has to make two simple decisions. Select a method for authenticating users. This should be done through a RADIUS server. And choose a method for ensuring the confidentiality and authenticity of exchange data. The WPA2 technology should be employed for this. Selecting these two options will practically guarantee a very high level of network security. Thank you.